Hello internet, my name is Hazel from Hazelnutty Games. Today is Saturday, it is the 27th of June, and we had patch week this week, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, patch 6.2, what went well, what didn't, and we're just going to, you know, hang out and we're going to talk about tonight. So I figure the best place to start is going to be with what went well, things that were great about it, that were exciting, that went quite smoothly. And the first one that I can think of is the actual patch day. Like the patch, the downtime and then the subsequent patch launch was very, very smooth. It was surprisingly smooth. Uh, the night before, a bunch of my guildies were, were on guild chat and were like taking bets as to when the servers will actually be up because we've all lived through a couple of those patch days when, you know, they say it's going to be 11 and then it's going to be 12 and then it's going to be 3 and it's like 7 o'clock and people that raid on Tuesdays are all flipping their, flipping their stuff. So uh, we were all taking bets and nobody thought that it would be up before 11 a.m. Pacific time on patch day. So that was actually kind of cool. Um, and then actually once the patch was up getting into um, the shipyards and getting into Tanan went really well. I was surprised by how little bottlenecking there was. Usually there's like a quest mod that people have to fight over. There's like an item that takes way too long to respond or something, but everything went really well in that response. Respect rather. Um, there was quite a few people that were going through it at the same time as me, but I didn't have any problems getting through it as well. So that was good. Uh, thing number two that is fantastic. About the patch so far, the raid. Um, the raid is probably the thing I can talk the most highly about about this patch. It's fantastic so far. Uh, our guild spent two nights, um, our normal raid schedule, which is uh, six hours a week, three hours on two nights. And um, it seems really cool. It seems very well designed. All of the boss fights are interesting. There aren't too many. There's some reused mechanics, but they're all sort of set up in really interesting ways. And uh, just lots of interesting encounters to keep raiders busy for a long time. I'm sure once the LFR starts coming out, people that are LFR only will start to have a bit more to do. And uh, it's just, it's a really cool raid. If you have an opportunity, if you don't have a guild that you raid with, but you have an opportunity to pug some of it, you should really take a look at it. it there's some neat stuff in there. Um, I can't talk too much more specifically about things like itemization and uh, heroic encounter design because we're still progressing on normal to kind of get a feel for the fight. I think we went like six. Six or seven um, normal, which was okay. Um, so I'll talk more about that, I think, after a couple weeks when we've gotten a little bit farther through the raid. But so far, it seems very cool. Time walking. Um, this weekend is the first time walking bonus event. It is the Burning Crusade time walking event. So you can uh, queue up for uh, a random Burning Crusade time walking dungeon. I have so far done um, Shattered Halls and Black Morass and the Architraz and then... Um, and one more, but uh, they are, those are really cool. They're not overtuned. I was a little worried they'd be like way too hard. And some of them are a little bit difficult, but uh, they're they're generally fairly easy to get through with a pug, which is A+. Plus. They drop 660 loot, or sorry, yeah, 660 loot, and the final boss has a chance to drop a 670, I believe, and that's excellent for uh, catching up alts especially, because in these time walking dungeons, your gear is scaled to what you would have been in Burning Crusade, so that you, you know, because you're time walking. So my, I have uh, my, my mage. Uh, I did make it in time. I leveled her to 100 right before the patch. And um, so she was a fresh 100. She had barely any gear and I'm trying to get gear for her. And time walking dungeons has actually been really good for that because I can, um, you know, I can keep up on the meters while having absolutely garbo gear because, um, because of the time walking. And then while I'm in there, you can pick up 660 pieces to replace like the heirlooms and leveling stuff. So that's been really cool. Mythic Dungeons, another dungeon addition. I've only done one of them so far, but it seemed really well tuned. Um, I did it with a guild group, so I imagine pugs will be a little bit sketchier, but they seem tuned well for like a normal, if you're like a normal mode raider, um, Mythic Dungeons seems like a really cool five man thing to do. If like, maybe maybe you're, you've are you got a really small normal mode raiding guild and you're just having trouble getting people together, but you know, at least five people show up. There's probably still, you can probably still do some Mythic Dungeons and get some relevant loot for you, so. Um, and also a good way for guilds to gear up any, like if somebody is bringing an alt, like maybe they're switching classes, they need to gear up an alt so they can switch into the main raid, or you've just made a new recruit to fill a role that you really need, but they need gear. Um, it's a good way for guilds to run people through those and get what you need. So those have been a success so far, as far as I'm concerned. And then um, the last thing that I've really enjoyed so far is the new garrison campaign, like the actual... Uh, I've done, I've only done one wing of it, but I've seen some guildies do a couple other ones, and so far what I've seen from them is actually really interesting. It ties really well into the lore of the Zone of Tanan Jungle and basically what's been going on Warlord so far. And they've been just kind of neat. Um, I did the Killrog one where you like go in the cave and then it was, it was a cool little piece of questing, so I liked that. So let's talk a little bit about what's not so hot about the patch. Now, 
I have to say, just overall, my overall feelings about this patch after having spent almost a week with it is I'm kind of disappointed. Like, the things that I've mentioned so far are really good, but they're not generally things that take up a huge amount of my time in this patch. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about shipyards, for starters. Shipyards. I wasn't super hyped about them to begin with, um, because, you know, we, are, we already have garrisons, we already have the mission table. Nobody is super crazy in love with that anymore, and all of a sudden we're getting another one, but this time it's boats. And I mean, that's fine, whatever. But I did not expect shipyards to be as clunky and frustrating as they are. Like, first of all, you're in your garrison, you do your missions, you do your pet battle daily, whatever. You want to do your shipyard, you gotta get on your pony and then ride all the way down to your shipyard to do your mission. So it's like really, it's not really, really far, but it's more, it's farther than it needs to be. I mean, it's it's far enough that I find myself using my garrison hearthstone to get back to my mission table if I'm not planning on playing that alt anymore for that immediate time. So, yeah, there uh, it's too far. Uh, you can't log out there without using the without waiting through the timer because it's not a rested zone, which is weird and awkward. <laughs> um, like sometimes I find myself debating, do I want to get like I'll garrison hearth just so that I can log out instantly. Like it's about the same amount of time, but. It's just not worth it to hang out at the shipyard, especially seeing as the um, the missions. They take so long. I see where they were going with that. Um, I almost never, especially once you start getting a couple of alts working on them, I would never go back to my garrison in time to turn in and send out like half hour and one hour and hour and a half missions. Those were too short. So I see where they're going with having like these four hour, you know, eight hour, one day, two day missions. But when you're first trying to get done these um, these quests to upgrade your shipyard, and it's just it feels really really slow. Especially when, if you can lose ships when you fail missions. I don't really want to send out anything that is less than like an 80% chance, and even that makes me really nervous. So I find myself, you know, with enough, enough ships to send out more missions. But I don't really want to because I spent all this time leveling up these boats, and I really don't want to have to start over again. That doesn't feel good, so... Not, not a fan of that. And then the last complaint I have about the shipyard, I'm sure I'll have more as I go forward. Um, it's not a terribly alt-friendly thing either, but that's a different story. Um, the last complaint about the shipyard is like a super obscure thing that probably nobody but me will ever run into. But So I'm on my mage, right? And I got my garrison level 3, I got my shipyard, I went to Tanan. That's all fine. And I'm starting to get into like LFR and queuing for dungeons and whatever to gear up. And I'm thinking, I'm going to be hanging up my garrison for a while waiting for these queues. I may as well upgrade my fishing hut. So, or unlock and upgrade my fishing hut so I can at least, you know, work on my fishing and get some fish for the guild bank while I'm waiting in these queues. So I go to unlock the fishing hut, and the initial unlock quest to get your fishing hut involves, or at least for Alliance, I don't know if this is the same for Horde, but for Alliance, you go talk to this dude, and this dude's like, hey, give me some crab claws, cool? And that would be fine, except for the fact that the crab claws are exactly where the shipyard is. So once you've unlocked your shipyard, if you try and go get those crab claws, all the crabs are either A, gone because there's, you know, a giant dock where they used to live, you know, destroying ecosystems for days. Or there's like three claw crabs that live right on the west side of the Alliance shipyard that you can see, but if you walk up to them, you'll phase out. So what I had to do as a mage was find the perfect spot to stand so that the crabs were not phased, nuke them down at range, and then use a Findle's Looterang to pick up the claws from them, and then wait for them to respawn because there's only three of them and you need four claws. It's the awkward. I really, that's just a bug that I'm sure they're going to fix. They'll probably just throw some more crabs along the beach, but I was already cranky about shipyards and that didn't help, so yeah, that's that. So, um, let's talk a little bit about the tiny terrors of Tanan. The actual fights themselves are kind of neat, and it's nice that once you have a couple of teams, you are basically able to deal with almost all of them. They can all be kind of fitted to a couple of categories as to how you want to deal with them. So that's nice that you don't need a million teams to deal with all 15 of these things. But it's just so... If you, like, I, on, my, on the first day of Tanan Unlocked, I went and I fought every single one of them because I wanted my Tiny Terrors of Tanan achievement, and I did it. And it took a really long time. Like, in Tanan Jungle, you're on... Gr you're m grounded, right? And there's mountains, and there's cliffs, and there's lava, and it takes an extraordinary amount of time to run around to all of those, especially when you're already having to do all these dailies, which I'll talk about next. Like, it's, it's an unrealistic amount of time to do all 15 of those dailies every day, so what I've been doing is just fighting one of those tiny terrors whenever I come across them and I feel like I have time. And then if I don't have all of the pets available from that by the time flying comes out, then I'll start doing it more seriously when I can actually fly to all of these guys instead of having to run to them on a pony because it's just it takes way too long, especially when you know there's going to be an easier way to do it in some amount of time. So Tiny Terrors, they're well designed. I like the rewards. Um, the Fell-Touched Battle Training Stones that add five levels to a battle pet, those, are, those I'm a big fan of. Um, 
I'll get pets to, like I said earlier, I'll get pets to like 11 or 12 on Vishar or um, Ashley. And then, you know, you throw one of those stones and you get them to like 16, and then I just finish them off with the generic battle training stones. So uh, I like those a lot. Um, the new pets, there seems like new pets in 6.2. There's plenty of them, which is great. Um, there's quite a few different pets and some new ways to get old pets. And that's wonderful. But there's a really distinct lack of new pet models. Like almost all of the new pets that we've gotten are recolors and they generally have recycled movesets. Which is just, it's really disappointing. I mean, you know, you hear that they added new rare spawn pets to um, Talador and then Spires of Iraq. And I'm like, man, that's cool. There's something new for me to camp. And then I look and it's a moth. And I'm like, well then, I that's not real high on my to-do list. I'll do it eventually because I collect pets. But like, really? Really? You're going to add new rare spawn pets and it's a moth? I might have a couple of those in my bags. I'm just saying. <laughs> It's not like you haven't been there before, so a little disappointed with the variety of models. I understand that artists probably have bigger priorities. They're probably working the next expansion or two by now, but it's just a little underwhelming. So that's that. Daily quests. So pre-6.2, um, everybody, the general feeling, or at least my general feelings with the new factions are that grinding is great. But if you're going to grind a faction rep, we kind of, I kind of miss daily quests. I kind of miss the Miss of Pandaria model of doing it. Now, everybody complained about dailies in Miss of Pandaria. And the reason for that is they felt super mandatory because um, there was raid gear on all of those factions. So you had to do hours of dailies every day. And that will understandably burn you up pretty quick. But the dailies themselves were quite neat. You know, there was a good variety of things that you had to do. There were well-condensed areas where you had to collect these things and kill these mobs and uh, get this boss and, you know, whatever. They felt good, as long as you weren't doing, like, 90 of them a day. And then, of course, Warlords comes around, and if you want to grind a rep, you go kill, you know, a couple thousand of this thing, and then you get rewards. And that's fine for, like, a vanilla rep, maybe one of them, but when it's all the reps available, it's just kind of bad feeling. So, then 6.2 comes around, and I hear that we're getting new reps, and with some pretty decent, some pretty neat looking rewards. And also um, dailies to help you do those reps. And I was really excited. I figured, now I never touched the daily quest on the PTR because I was too busy doing the pet battles. But I figured we were getting a 4.2, like when I heard about Tanan Jungle with new factions and daily quests. I was thinking 4.2, you know, Rage of the Firelands, unlocking the Fireland, like the Molten Front. That was really cool. Or 5.3. The, um, whatever the hell that was called in the Crafts of Wilds, the Horde vs. Alliance PvP thing, those were really well done experiences that progressed as you went along, um, that involved both rep grinds through questing, and there were some rare mobs you can do, and it was just, it was a really good pro experience with progression to it. And so far, in Tanan, you know, you pick up your quests, and you're like, well, better do some Apexis dailies, because I guess that's what this is all about. And not only do you got, got to go do a Pexus dailies, but no, you pick an Apexus daily and you go do it while, you know, looking for rares for the Hand of the Awakened thing, which is their only daily quest. Uh, so you're doing your Pexus daily and then you, oh no, you go and turn it in. It's like, hey, do you want to do two more? I would actually rather than when you just pick up the quest initially, have me pick up one to do a specific Apexus daily. And then have me pick up one to do three bonus areas so I don't feel like I just did one and then have to, and then wasted like credit that I could have been getting. I would rather them give me a quest to do three while I picked up the original one. It would just feel better. And then this, you know, do one and then, oh, hey, just in case you weren't done with that, here, have a couple more to do of the exact same thing you just did. It's just, it's kind of sucky feeling. And then the reps, like, they're completely tied to that with the exception of Saber Stalkers, which is very much an Emperor of Shao Hao, you know, elite style grind. At least Saber Stalkers has one weekly quest where you can, uh, you know, you get the claws and you go do the, um, the little arena thing, and that's fine. It's weekly, but it's fine. Um, and then most people I know just, you know, got into a pre-made group finder group and ground out Saber Stalkers at that little fountain area with the never-ending spawning dudes, which was not the funnest of gameplay, but I mean, I, I guess I prefer that to the Hand of the Awakened, here, go find 10 rares in a day thing. They, they just, they feel really underwhelming, they feel... They take a long, they take a good, decent chunk of time, and it's, they don't, it's not, I don't feel like I'm progressing in the zone. I feel like I'm just wandering around existing in it and not unlocking anything really worthwhile. Now, I know later in the Garrison campaign, you do unlock more things, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. Of course, I'm going to keep doing it because I need the reps for flying, but I don't feel good about it so far.
Uh, the other thing about the dailies and Tanan and the Tanan experience is that it is very unfriendly to a brand new level 100. Um, like I said, my maid, she was about 615 when I first took her to Tanan, like when I'd fr by the time I'd gotten my garrison upgraded, and every single fight with any mob one on one was a life or death battle of kiting and just whittling it down, and if two of them attacked me, that was just done. It is, uh, it's not easy. And maybe that's just a mage thing. Maybe I just suck at being a mage. That is a possibility, but it is not easy to go out there as a new 100, so. Now that I've got a bit more gear from time walking, that shouldn't be as much of a problem, but I can imagine, like, somebody that's, um, you know, newer to WoW, or maybe they've decided to come back for this patch, and they're, you know, just a fresh 100. Uh, they're gonna have a bit of a gross time in Tanan when they first get out there. It's not gonna be the nicest, most, you know, welcoming experience with muffins and crap. So, yeah. Uh, shipyard, no fun. Tiny tears are fine, but they're really spread out. And also, half the rewards are spores. I already talked about pet recolors, but seriously, spores? Um, daily quest, not so good. And then, uh, the other thing is, um, those four ultra rares. You've got Vengeance, Doom Roller, Doom Claw Talon. Vengeance, Doom Roller, Doom Talon, and, uh, Terror Fist. And ideally... You kill each one every single day because they can give you oil, they can give you a mount, or one of three, a thing that could turn into one of three mounts, and they can also give you this medallion that gives you a significant amount of rep with every Draenor faction, which is obviously super valuable. So it doesn't make sense to not camp out every one of those every day, and the most efficient way to camp them out is to sit at the spawn point and server hop until you find a server where it's up. Which not only takes a fairly considerable amount of time for how mandatory that practice feels, but it's it's frustrating gameplay. I mean, you've got all of these people, maybe you're in a, in a group, like a pre-made group finder group, and you're trying to do something else, but you have all of these people server hopping into your group and then immediately leaving because they're just looking for those rares. You end up with a whole bunch of people that are entering groups they have no intention of participating in. And, uh, and these rares, it's just, it's, it's kind of... It kind of sucks. I kind of see where they were going there. It's neat to have a rare thing like that, but when you, it, it just, it ends up feeling mandatory. And I don't know what to do to fix it, but, uh, you, like, I, my guildies will spend a significant amount of time just server hopping. And, uh, and I, I, I do the same thing because, you know, you want the rep tokens, you want these awful daily quests to be over faster so you can go back to, I don't know, whatever else there is to do. <laughs> And then the last thing would be PvP, and I can't actually solidly put this in one column or the other on the good and not good side, because I haven't tried it yet. I have not touched PvP because I've been too busy, you know, working with the shipyards and Intanan and time walking and mythic dungeons and all that. So there's lots to do. You can't say there's not lots to do. There's plenty to do, but um, about uh, roughly half of it feels kind of disappointing. So I'm hoping that through creative hotfixes and... Uh, you know, good decisions, some extra life is sort of brought into it, and maybe it'll get better as I progress further into Tanan. It may be just too early to pass judgment, but the first week of it has been not the most amazing thing ever. So th that's what I think about Tanan. I would love to hear some of your thoughts. Um, a quick note about my personal life. Um, you may have noticed I haven't been streaming a lot for the last couple of days. Um, here, where I'm at in Oregon, has been getting a really disgusting heat wave, and there's going to be another one next weekend. We have one tiny little AC unit in our apartment that is doing its damnedest, but for the whole apartment, it can't really do a whole lot, and um, it's just it's just not enough. I can't I can't really be streaming with like the lights on and the extra heat it makes my computer. We've basically been keeping the computer off most of the time because you know it's a, it's a hundred plus outside. It gets over hundred and ten in here. That's the kind of heat where the elderly and children start just dying. So we're just doing our best to not melt and to keep our pets alive and to keep my plants alive. And, uh, yeah, uh, the videos and streams might be a little bit light. I'm, I'm, we're working on getting another AC unit in the apartment that'll hopefully alleviate it to make it livable in here. But until then, I'm going to be sleeping through the afternoons, um, complaining a lot, and, uh, not streaming until, until it clears up and becomes a little bit more habitable. Nobody wants to listen to me bitch about how hot it is for an hour and a half, so that's that. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I really would like to see hear your thoughts on all the things that we talked about with Tanan to see where everybody else is at. Maybe bring up some points that I hadn't thought about. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. And a day. A wonderful day. <laughs>